Welcome back. In this video, I'll be looking at 10.2 iteration. 10.2 represents chapter 10, section 2 of the Pearson A level Mass Pure Mass Year 2 textbook. I'm going to start off this particular section by going through what roots of f of x is. Well, roots of f of x is equivalent to writing the statement solutions of f of x equal to 0. Solutions of f of x equal to 0 is equivalent to writing the statement solutions of x equal g of x. Where does x equal g of x come from? Well, if we start with the equation f of x equal to 0, we can make x the subject. If we make x the subject, this gives us x equal g of x, where g of x is some function of x. Now, x equal g of x leads on to something called the recurrence relation. So we can write down the recurrence relation xn plus 1 equal g of xn. Now, if I want to work out x1, I replace the n with 0. So x1 is equal g of x0. If I want to work out x2, I replace the n with 1. So x2 is equal g of x1. And so on. The process of working out x1, x2, x3 and so on is called iteration. Now, iteration gives rise to two possible situations. Either convergence to the root of f of x or divergence from the root of f of x. Okay, so we could have convergence to a root of f of x or divergence from the root of f of x. Convergence to the root of f of x, what does that mean? Well, that just means that the iteration is getting closer to the root of f of x. Divergence from the root of f of x, what does that mean? Well, that just means that the iteration is moving away from the root of f of x. The next part is to look at staircase and cobweb diagram. Before I look at staircase and cobweb diagram, I would like to recap roots of f of x. If you understand what roots of f of x means, then you will truly appreciate the graphs that I've drawn over here. So, roots of f of x is equivalent to writing the statement solutions of f of x equal to 0. Solutions of f of x equal to 0 is equivalent to writing the statement solutions of x equal g of x. Now, x equal g of x, what does that represent graphically? Well, x equal g of x represents the point of intersection between y equal x and y equal g of x. Over here, I've got four coordinate grids. I'm going to be going over staircase and cobweb diagram, which will be linked to convergence and divergence. For each of these coordinate grids, I've drawn y equal g of x to be a curve. If I go back to this statement over here, x equal g of x, x represents a straight line passing through the origin and g of x represents a curve. If I start off with x0 and put it into the function g, that will give me x1. So x1 represents a point on the curve g. It also represents a point on the line y equal x. So in general, when we actually label x0, x1, x2, x3 and so on, on our coordinate grids, we follow this pattern over here, curve then line. So if I use that format, I can start with x0, okay, go up until I hit the curve. That point there is x1, go across to the line. Go up, that point there is x2, go across to the line. Go up, that point there is x3. Now, what type of diagram have I drawn? Well, this particular diagram looks like a staircase. So I can write staircase. And what we have is convergence to the root beta. Let's have a look at the next coordinate grid. I'm going to start off with x0 and follow this particular format, curved and line. So curve, that point there is x1, line. Curve. That point there is x2. What do I see in this particular scenario? Again, I've drawn a staircase diagram. And we have convergence to the root alpha. Now, suppose I start off with x0 over here and follow the format curved and line. This is what I get. Curve. That is x1 and the line, curve and line and so on. Again, I have a staircase diagram. 
but in this case I have divergence from the root beta and the root alpha. Next one. Now, I'm going to um, start off with this x0 over here, okay, follow curved and line format. So if I go up to the curve, that there's x1 across to the line, then to the curve, that is x2 across to the line, then to the curve, that there's x3. In this particular case, I also have a staircase diagram but we have convergence to the root alpha. So staircase and convergence to alpha. Suppose we start off with x0 over here. So I'm going to follow curve. That is x1 and then line. Curve, then line. Curve, then line, curve, then line. Now over here, I have something called a cobweb diagram, cobweb, okay? So I can write cobweb, cobweb, and we have convergence to the root alpha. So that there was an example of a cobweb diagram. So you could have staircase diagram or cobweb diagram. Let's have a look at this particular coordinate grid. So let's start off with x0 over here. Follow the format curved and line. So go up until you hit the curve. Okay. So that there's x1. Go across to the line. Go down to the curve. That there's x2, go across the line, curve, line, curve, line, curve, line, curve, line, we have a cobweb diagram, okay, in this particular case, divergence from the root alpha, okay, so cobweb diagram. Let's start off with x0 over here now. Okay, so if I start off with x0 there and follow a curved and line, I get the following result. Curve, that there is x1, then line. Curve, that there is x2, then line. Curve, that there is x3, and then line. Again, if I start off over here, I get a cobweb diagram and that represents divergence from alpha. Divergence from alpha. So sometimes in the exam you might need to annotate your diagram. They will give you a starting point x0 and they might say to you, okay, show that there is a convergence or a divergence. So you might have a cobweb diagram or a staircase diagram. Here is an exam style question. g of x is equal e to the power x minus 1 plus 2x minus 15. Part a, show that the equation g of x equal to 0 can be written as x equal ln 15 minus 2x plus 1 where x is less than 15 over 2. So let's start off by writing g of x equal to 0. This implies that e to the power x minus 1 plus 2x minus 15 is equal to 0. Now you take a step back and think what you need to do next. Well, I want to make x the subject, but I want a minus 2x inside the natural log. And I need a natural log. So the part that I will make the subject in this equation is this x over here. So 
I'm going to take the plus 2x and the minus 15 to the other side and if I do this I obtain the following result e to the power x minus 1 is equal 15 minus 2x now I can apply natural logs on both sides Natural log and E are inverses of each other, so they cancel out, bringing down the power. So x minus 1 is equal ln 15 minus 2x. The final step is to take the minus 1 to the other side. So x is equal ln 15 minus 2x plus 1, as required. Now, why is x less than 15 over 2? Well, whatever you have inside the natural log has to be more than zero, okay? Because you can't take a natural log of a negative. So if I take 15 minus 2x and write down that this over here has to be more than zero and then solve the inequality, I end up with x is less than 15 over 2. The root of g of x equals zero is alpha. The iterative formula xn plus 1 equal ln 15 minus 2xn plus 1 x0 equal 3 is used to find a value for alpha. Part B, calculate the values of x1, x2 and x3 to four decimal places. Well, to work out x1, we need to set n equal 0. So x1 is equal ln 15 minus 2 x0 plus 1. Okay. We know that x0 is 3, so if we put x0 equal 3 in, we get ln 9 plus 1. That particular value, we then round to four decimal places to give us x1 equal 3.1972. Now, to work out x2, we substitute n equal 1. Okay, to end up with this result over here, ln 15 minus 2 multiplied by answer plus 1. So you have to use the answer button. Don't put in x1 equal 3.1972 into here because then you will get rounding errors because this one over here is rounded to four decimal place. Okay? So by using the answer button, you get x2 equal 3.1524 to four decimal places. In the same way, you can calculate x3 by substitute n equal 2 using the answer button, giving you x3 equal 3.1628 to four decimal places. Let's have a look at part C. By choosing a suitable interval, show that alpha is equal 3.16 correct to two decimal places. So over here, we need to calculate up and lower bounds for 3.16. So the upper bound is 3.165. The lower bound is 3.155. So our suitable interval is 3.155 to 3.165. The next step is to substitute x equal 3.155 and x equal 3.165 into g of x respectively. After substituting x equal 3.155 and x equal 3.165 into g of x, I get g of 3.155 to be minus 0 0.06 dot dot dot, which is less than zero. g of 3.165 to be 0 0.04 dot dot dot, which is more than zero. So now I write a conclusion. Change in sign, so alpha is equal 3.16 to two decimal places. Here is another exam style question. The curve with the equation y equal two ln eight minus x meets the line y equal x at a single point, x equal alpha. Part A, show that alpha is between three and four. Now we need to find a suitable function in which we can substitute x equal 3 and x equal 4 to show that there is a change of sign. How do we find this function? Well, we know that x equal alpha is the solution to the equation 2 ln 8 minus x equal x. So we can start off by writing 2 ln 8 minus x equal x. I can take the x to the left hand side and write 2 ln 8 minus x minus x equal 0. x equal alpha is also the solution to this equation because this equation just comes from that equation. 
What is my suitable function f of x? Well, f of x is just this over here. So I can write let f of x equal 2 ln 8 minus x minus x. So now my next step is to substitute x equal 3 and x equal 4 into this function and show that there is a change of sign. After carrying out my substitution, I get f of 3 to be more than 0 and f of 4 to be less than 0. Now we write a conclusion. There is a change of sign, so x equal alpha lies in the interval alpha is more than 3 but less than 4. Moving on to part b. Figure 2 shows the graph of y equal 2 ln 8 minus x and the graph of y equal x. So this is figure 2. A student uses the iteration formula xn plus 1 equal 2 ln 8 minus xn where n is an element of the set of natural numbers in an attempt to find an approximation for alpha. Using the graph, so we have to use the graph and starting with x0 equal 4, determine whether or not this iteration formula can be used to find an approximation for alpha. Justify your answer. So we need to use the graph starting at x0 equal 4. Follow this format, curve, then line to see if there's convergence or divergence. So curve, line, curve, line, curve, line, curve, line, and so on. So over here we have a cobweb diagram. which shows convergence to the root. So yes, the iteration formula can be used. Can be used starting at x0 equal 4. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to subscribe.